let's build a human handoff feature within voice flow using voice flow. Now, what I mean by human handoff feature is assume that it's during normal business hours and somebody's on your chat bar on your website. One of these bots is to get you more leads, but if you're already available, there's no reason for them to go through all these hoops just to be able to talk to you. So what we did is we just gave him an option that says, hey, look, chat to us now. Click on that. Now, what's actually going to happen is I'm going to get a notification saying, hey, look, somebody wants to talk to you. And if I check my email, it says, hey, Roger, somebody's requesting to chat with you. All I've got to do is just copy this link, go back into my browser. And there it is. I can just respond. And I'll chat. Now, if I go back to where, where we were looking at initially, and now it's chatting with Donald. How can I help? So let's go ahead and build this. All right. Well, there's a couple of steps to actually do this. But by the way, all the templates, every single like thing that can be copied and pasted will also be available in the resource hub. So you don't necessarily have to rebuild anything yourself. The first part of what we want to do is I'm assuming that you're using voice flow, but if you are familiar with voice flow, you're going to want to get familiarized with it because we use it for basically every single product that we have. This is what allows us to embed Calendly links. Like I mean, in the last video, this is what allows us to file uploads so that people can actually put pictures in your assistants and actually send them to you. You can play YouTube videos. And as we're going through this demonstration, I'll show you, you might notice a couple of different features that we're using, using voice glow. That's all in the same software. And I think, I think we paid maybe like five bucks for it. Initially it was free, but point is, is well, well worth the money. Now I'll put the link to voice glow in the description, but once you've actually signed up for it, you're going to want to go ahead and download this template. And what that's basically going to do is going to look something like this. Now, once you've actually downloaded that template, go ahead and import it using this button within voice flow and then bring in that template. It should say VG 0.9.0.3. Now, once you actually click on that, this is part one, let it load and then just go to designer, click on VG handoff initialization. And you'll notice this is also where you get every single other embedding tool that we're, that we're using. So if I click on VG components, this is where you have file upload, you have your website embeds, iframe embeds, and multi-select options, which you won't be able to do. You'll, if you want people to be able to select two different options from a, a list of dropdowns, you can have, you know, browser data, some more technical stuff, dynamic care sales, et cetera. It goes on and on and on. The one that we're actually interested in today is the initial, initialization flow. So all you want to do is, this is a couple of things, but all you want to do is use this mode type here, click on trackpad and just select this entire thing. Copy that into your existing voice flow assistant. So I've got the plumbing assistant that we actually made in the last video, which basically allows users to either book appointments using a Calendly embed, using voice glow, or also embedding YouTube videos for if somebody has a common problem, the one that we used was a toilet leaking. So if somebody says, hey, look, my toilet's leaking, you'll present them a video of how to fix it within two or three minutes. And lastly, if somebody had an issue with the service that was provided, they can find a place here to actually complain instead of just venting it on Google which for most local businesses is kind of like the lifeblood of their company. So any way that we can help minimize or mitigate people venting on Google is a win. Click on your plumbing assistant or whichever assistant you're using for this. Click on home. But basically all you would do is just copy and paste it here. They're going to look something like this. And I'll delete the old version just to show you. But we've got a couple of cards here. The most important one, you can basically leave this as is, except for one, which is the intent. Now I deleted the other one. So we're going to create a new intent here. Now what the intent is, is basically when does voice flow trigger this intent? And what this is going to do is that if ever at any point, somebody said within the conversation, I want to talk to somebody, I need help or anything along those lines where they clearly mentioned that they want to talk to a human, we want this to trigger at any point in the conversation. So all we're doing is we're, creating, we're pressing on select intent. So like trigger intent, and I already have one, but I'll create a new one. I'll call handoff two. Triggers one user wants to talk to human. Now the utterance is the most important part of this whole intent creation. It's basically saying, hey, look, if somebody says something re relatively close to these lines, I want to trigger this intent. For example, we use I want to talk to. Human. Or for example, you could put I need help. I talk to someone. And then what I do is I just press generate 20 sample phrases. I'm going to use a bit of AI to create other related phrases to the ones I just gave. 
So is there a, re a real person I can speak with? I require assistance. Can I transfer this with my agent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All this. I would just go through these sample phrases, make sure there's nothing in there that you don't want to be there. This all looks good and you need help. You can talk, transfer it to a human. Perfect. Create and done. That's pretty much all the better to because now what is really telling is at any point during this entire conversation, this is the rest of the voice low assistant, by the way, which we made in a previous video. So if you want access to this, you can either watch that video or you can click the link in the description and it'll be available as well. But what we're doing is that we're saying essentially in any part of this conversation, I, if I say talk to a human, it'll take me here and I'll show you what that looks like. I do press on run, some trading. I train the system. Now, this is important. Give it a few seconds. Perfect. Now, when it's trained, I can do run test. Now, if I say book appointment, or let's say my tone's leaking, right? Let's say I do talk to human. Now, normally, this wouldn't be an option, right? It would take me to the fail safe. But now, if I've done talk to human and I'm done it correctly, it should actually take me to the talk to human. Actually, no, it didn't. Why is that? I click on human handoff, available from other topics. Okay. That's gotcha. So the mistake here was now make sure when you're testing these out to listen for all intents, not only on this specific step. Now, what this does is between both of these, if, especially if I'm in this card, basically this allows you to tell voice flow. Are you listening to intents across the entire system or only within the step? So make sure you press that. Otherwise, this will not work. Listen for all intents. And then if I do run again, run test. Toilet sleeping. Help. Talk. Here, please. Now, as you can see, it says we notify our team and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now, all of that, this won't work because this is within voice flow, but that's exactly what we wanted to happen. This flow triggers. So we've now created the voice flow aspect and that's pretty much all you've got to touch with the voice flow. There's nothing else. What you could add is, for example, it says no team member available after timeout has passed. We could just connect it back into the main flow so that it'll just take them to the main menu and say, look, either book an appointment, manage with your service or my toilet is leaking. So just to make sure that there's always a fail safe or that it always goes somewhere and not just doesn't just end the conversation. But once we're done with the voice flow side of things, how do we actually connect both voice flow, which is kind of the engine in the background and voice flow, which sits on top of it. All you got to do is press, go back into voice flow. And you want to go ahead and press on widgets and create a new widget. This can be, you can select voice flow right here. You can name this whatever you want. I already have a widget, but this is where you would create a new one. The most important part of this is once you've created your widget, then you've gone ahead and changed it however you'd like. What you want to want to do is within settings, or sorry, within overview, this by voice flow dialogue API key is how you connect both, both voice flow and voice flow. So if I click on plumbing assistant within voice flow, if I look on the left hand side, there's going to be a button that says integration. Right here, if I click on API keys, this API key is what I go ahead and press here to, I just basically press, basically I paste it here. And this is what connects both. That's all you've got to do. Now, once that thing is connected, you'll be able to use voice flow as a additional layer on top of voice flow. Now, a little thing I didn't mention within voice flow as well to make things a bit more, a bit better. So some, some customization features. Within the request handout um, card, you can actually press on action body. And right here, you can change the timeout to an indefinite number of seconds. We've got it set at 60. You could put it as 30. I think 30 would be better just because it would seem more human. If I'm waiting there for 60 seconds and nobody's there, I won't be super happy. So I would maybe suggest to just lower it down to 30. So that worst case scenario, if somebody isn't available, they're not, they haven't just wasted a minute staring at their phone waiting for somebody or to tell them, hey, look, there's nobody here. But we've not connected. Voice flow to voice flow, going down, going down to here. We're pretty much done with the voice flow side of things. All we're going to want to do now within voice glow, and I know the name can be kind of confusing, but click on voice glow. And then if you don't already have an agency account, this is where you're going to want to go ahead and create one. Click on agency on the left hand side, and then basically just create one if you don't already have one. You can connect your domain here as well, which basically gives people access to a dashboard, be able to see analytics, that sort of thing. Part that we're concerned about here though, is press on email. And now this is where you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and actually input your domain. So your website basically, or whatever you have control of using GoDaddy or Squarespace or your domain provider. What it's gonna tell you to do is once you actually input your domain, it's gonna give you a bunch of DNS records. All you're gonna to wanna to do after that 
is go to a website like GoDaddy, which is where we have all our websites. And the most important part within GoDaddy, like what we're using as our website provider, is the DNS setting. So all you've got to do is within VoiceFlow, take these records, which is going to be, I think it was two texts and one, uh, I think it was an A record, but there's three records going to be shown. Go to add new records, put exactly what they tell you right here. Choose the type, choose the value, or choose the name, choose the value. There's going to be three of them. Press save, give it a few minutes, and that, and that will basically allow you to send emails from your custom domain to whoever you need to notify that there's somebody waiting for their assistance. So that's how you connect the email portion of it. Next step is guy actually going to be to create an organization and then within that organization, create a client and then put uh, the widget within the specific client so that VoiceGlow knows where to send different email requests for different helpers. So going back to VoiceGlow, you want to go to clients and you're going to want to press new client. This, now the most important part here is to press organization. This is what you need. make sure you have an organization set up. You got Roger two, for example, let's add this. Now, importantly, you can drag, I've already got this widget right here, but usually it will be on the right hand side. Just take your widget, drop it wherever you like. I'll drop it back here because I've already got the setup. All right. Now, within new organization, this is where you would add users. So people who would actually be notified that somebody needs to know about their assistant or somebody requiring help. Got to do is press on add user and then you can put in their name, their email. This is also the password that's being generated for them. So just go ahead and send that over to them. Or if you're creating this for your own business, you can use this to actually log in to your dashboard or the admin do a couple of different settings here. Not super important. The most important one is just email, password, and the name. Once you've gone ahead and actually added this user, that person will now be the one who receives the notifications. So I'll go ahead and add myself team or Mike dot com and then add user. I've now added a uh, user. So that's the organizational side of things. And that's the agency and client side of things. The last portion to actually go ahead and get this all set up is within the widgets of voice goal. So let's take a look at that. Now with all you gotta do is press on widgets and then just search up the widget you just created. You should only, this is your first time using voice goal. It should be, they should be the only one. Click on your widget again and then click on settings. Within settings, there's going to be three things, settings that you want to take a look at. First one is going to be enable human, ha human handoff pop-up. Basically, do you want people to have this handoff that pops up? And if you remember within voice flow, we created a, um, a flow where if somebody a long, long conversation says, I need to talk to a human, it will do it in case, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to make it a like market fact that you guys can talk live chat. It's really up to you. If you want people to talk to you all the time, you can enable it. If you don't want to, you disable it and it won't show up. But if somebody still says, hey, look, I want to talk to you human, it will still initiate that flow, letting you know that somebody wants to talk to you. Let's, for this example, let's keep it on. You can either do always show it or the cool part about voice is it will actually take into consideration whether the browser is, is on. So if I'm logging to my dashboard, it'll say, hey, look, online or offline. If I do always show, it means regardless of the time, regardless if you're online, regardless if you're offline people will still be able to request the opportunity to talk to you. Once again, this is more of a personal preference of whether you want people to talk to you a lot or not. It's really up to you. And then you have fixed handle pop-up, which you can turn on or off. doesn't really change any functionalities, which is more for design wise. And that is pretty much all you've got to do to set it up. And now if I've done everything correctly, all you've got to do is press on the chat button right here. Okay, just give it a sec. That's my email saying, hey, by the way, look, somebody wants to talk to you, reply to them, email me, looks exactly like this. If I go to press, go to conversation, I can actually go ahead and handle chat and be like, and then if I go back into voice glow, I'm talking now chatting with myself using voice glow as the filler or as the a layer on top of voice flow. So that's how you add the human handoff feature within your chatbots in voice flow using voice glow as the helper in this case. Now, I know it went through a lot of information through this video, but I'll make this document accessible within the resource hub, as well as the actual templates for a plumbing assistant that we created in the last video. If you wanted more information on that, you can also go ahead and look at that video. But if you have any questions, let me know. Oh, by the way, if you have any other ideas about stuff, features that you would like to be built, let me know in the comments. It's my favorite way to get more ideas for these sorts of videos. Thank you all for watching.